Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we have traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. We're at the um, Cinema Arts Center in Huntington, Long Island, and we're hosting a Grateful Dead concert film. It's a rare clips from the 60s and 70s. They started in San Francisco in 1967 and just did these massive concerts for years and years until Jerry Garcia died in 95. But I like the idea of resurrecting them on film. So we brought them back from their heyday with all these rare TV appearances and concerts and film clips. And we've culminated them here into a two hour retrospective. The Dead were just geniuses because there were so many collective forces at once, you know? The two drummers, <laughs> they were the first to do that. They had Donna, the, the singer-dancer, as you saw there in some of the footage. Just a whole unique collective of people. Today was a wonderful montage of Grateful Dead videos, especially it's really nice to see that they were young at one day. You get used to them being older as you see them in life, and uh, to see them when they were 20 years old was fantastic. Did you ever see them live? Over a hundred times, mostly in um, Manhattan, and then we'd travel around a little bit. I'd been as far as Virginia or uh, Colorado mountains once. Tonight's show, I think, was in Europe. I was never privileged enough to get over, you know, to Europe and uh, act actually played in Egypt at one time in front of the pyramids. I would have liked to have seen that tour. It's, it's not just a band, it's the people. So it wasn't about a place, it was what we were doing in these places. That's what the Grateful Dead was. An assault on the senses, an LSD trip without drugs, flashing strobe lights, spermatozoic color. <laughs> combination of American music was really in, and playing the jams for the, the hour long jams made it like no other band you know I mean even the big bands of the early 70s whether it was Yes or King Crimson or uh, Pro Cole Harem most of those bands had a set that they played the same night over and over the dead just went they played whatever they thought that night was going to be good. You know, or whatever they were coming up at the minute. They were an improvisational band. Very few of the rock and roll bands of that era were improvisational, where they would play an hour of just improvising. And that's where the jazz came into it. I dipped into the sauce about 78. I grew up in the late 60s, so uh, I didn't think like the social order. And thus, here was this improvisational stuff that the kids I liked and the older guys were listening to. Oh, this is the band. And that was it. I listened to their records for years until a ticket fell on my lap in 78, and then I realized who follows this music, and then that's a whole nother thing. I've seen the Grateful Dead about over 200 times while they were together. What is it about them that you know, appeals to you so much? That's my mother's question. They're at the garden, they're doing nine nights of the garden, I'm there a fourth night, she's like, why would you go back? What could be so good? Never knowing that every show was different. Well, they could play weeks without hitting the same song twice.
they bring together all the music, like blues, all genres of music into a blended psychedelic mixture that moves you to a new transcendental space. They had a tremendous following, like a cult. And nobody, you, you'll never see anything like that again. For some reason, you know, I guess I was young in those days. I was like 14, 15. I didn't get them. As you get older and you start listening again, now I get them. And I realize how intelligent they were as musicians. And uh, people should appreciate them more. And that's what we're doing here tonight.